Well, hi, I'm Katrina. It's really good to be with you today. And uh, we're starting a new seven part series all about relationships. I mean, none of us are islands, are we? And uh, we're made for connection. We've got people all around us. God intended for that. We live in community and all the time we have different relationships. Whether that's the relationship of literally just, you know, I've gone to fill up my car with diesel and I have a chat to the person in the shop or whether it's the, those closest and dearest to us. We're all in relationships. And the Bible has a lot to say about how we do relationships well. So we've crafted this seven week series um, to encompass kind of some really practical skills that are going to help us in our relationships alongside the, that theological kind of foundation and what the Bible says. So the first three weeks, we're going to look at some relationship tools and principles. We're going to look at connection. We're going to look at conflict. We're looking at communication. And then we're going to go into some specific relationships and circumstances of life for the final four weeks, looking at marriage and singleness and divorce and parenting. And uh, so it's, I believe it's going to be a really powerful time for us as a community that we really do think, how does God want me to live my life? What difference does my faith make in my relationships? So we're going to provide both practical advice and theological teaching. I hope you'll come along with us on the ride for these seven weeks. I believe God's going to do some transformational things in each of our lives. Let me just pray before we get into this week's content. Father, thank you that... You love us, you've made us for community, and uh, you have things in your word for us that will help us in our relationships. And Lord, I pray, give us ears that hear what you're saying today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we're going to start today with connection. Now, connecting is kind of foundational for all relationships, isn't it, really? And uh, it's kind of hardwired in us, this need to connect. I know, you know, if I meet somebody new, I, I kind of want to connect. I want to think, what's our common ground? How can we connect? We have this real desire for connection. And God created us to be in relationship with one another and to be in relationship with him. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit are always in continual relationship with one another. And today we're going to look at connecting through listening, how we can connect through listening, that listening is the key for us to connecting with one another, listening to and being listened to. And the prize in all this in uh, things about listening is emotional connection. It's not information, it's emotional connection. Now, I don't know about you, do you just say perhaps to the person you're living with, for me, it'd be uh, my husband and son um, at the moment, at the end of the day, how was your day? Now, what I'm really asking for is I want to hear the emotions of the day. How was it for you? What impact has it had on you? Do you have any news? Um, how did you feel when you went into this meeting or saw that person? But if we're not careful, if we don't really understand that question and take it pretty literally, like, what did you do today? We're in danger of just getting like a copy of their calendar, aren't we? First I did this, then I saw this, then I went here, then I went there. Well, yes, we've got information, but I don't feel any kind of connection. Do you hear me? I don't feel any connection because I don't know how they felt about it. So that is the prize in listening, that emotional connection. We're not listening for information. And if you think, oh yeah, I struggle a bit with kind of even knowing how I feel or expressing how I feel, I've got a good little tip for you. And it's this, when sharing feelings, if you put the word like or that after feeling, it's not an emotion, it's a thought. So if you say, I feel like, or I feel that, you're actually giving people a thought. But if you say, I feel, you need to find an emotion word. And believe me, there are tons of them. Do a quick Google, you'll find a list of like 100 words to do with emotions to help us in how we express ourselves. But in any case, we're not talking about talking today, we're talking about listening. And so um, our daughter um, brought a game into our home um, during evening meals that we sometimes go back to now, we kind of remember, because it brings in this emotional connection. It's a really simple game. During the meal, you just talk about your high and your low of the day, or you just mention it. And if you want, you can talk more about it. If you want, someone can ask you a question. But actually, it helps you to think, what was my high of the day and what was my low? And it helps you to articulate that. And I'll come back to that at the end. Might be giving you that as a little homework. So well, listen out for that. So how are we going to listen well? Well, this is all about how God says relationships work well. And so we've got a key verse today from James. 
and it's this. And it's entitled, Listening and Doing, James 1, verse 19. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. And I looked it up in a couple of other um, translations of the Bible, just for a slightly different angle on it, because you might be super familiar with that and think, yeah, I know. But let's listen to these words. I think they punch a really good uh, impact here. From the message, it says on this, act on what you hear. Post this at all the intersections, dear friends. Lead with your ears. Follow up with your tongue and let anger straggle along in the rear. God's righteousness doesn't grow from human anger. Lead with your ears. So good, isn't it? And what about this from the Amplified? Understand this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Let everyone be quick to hear. Be a careful, thoughtful listener. Be slow to speak, a speaker of carefully chosen words, and be slow to anger, patient, reflective, forgiving. Wow, we're going to look later at some skills to help us be careful, thoughtful listeners. So how do we naturally listen? Well, yes, we've got two ears, and yes, we're hearing all the time, but actually we listen really badly, I think you might agree. We generally listen for um, information or in order to defend our, our point or listening to kind of have a way into actually speaking and sharing our opinion. Can you think of a time when you shared something with someone and they really weren't listening? Why don't we just stop for 30 seconds, talk to the person that's next to you or near you, share that experience. A time when you chatted with someone and they weren't listening. What were they doing? How did you feel? So I hope that was helpful and you told them about how it felt for you when you weren't listened to. You see, there are these bad habits we get into with listening. And a number of years ago, Simon and I went on the marriage course, and one of the weeks was all about communication and, and our listening habits. And it picked out these few bad habits, which I'm gonna go through, see if they ring true for you. Now, I know it's tempting that you're thinking of your significant other, you're thinking of your person at work and what a bad listener they are, but let's think about ourselves. What's ringing true for us? Do you see this in yourself? So for instance, one of the bad habits would be to reassure. Now, for instance, if I said something like, oh, um, you know, someone says, how are you? And I say, well, I'm quite tired at the minute. I just keep waking up really early. Um, if they're a reassurer, they'll probably say something like, don't worry, you are going to sleep like a log tonight which actually isn't true and doesn't really help me. So that's a reassurer. Or if you're someone that gives advice when you're listening to someone. If I'd said, I'm, I'm quite tired right now, I, I keep waking up really early, you might say, you should go to bed earlier. Well, the Bible says fools find no pleasure in understanding, but they delight in airing their own opinions. <laughs> or perhaps you might intellectualize. And you might say, oh, I watched a really interesting documentary about sleep and they talked all about and then you talk about all the findings that you found out, which might be really helpful, but isn't really listening to what I'm saying. I'm quite tired right now and I keep waking up early. And what about this, if you go off on a tangent? So perhaps if I say, uh, a friend says something like, hey, I haven't seen you for a while. And I say, oh no, I've been away um, on a lovely holiday in Croatia by train. Well, if they go off on a tangent and they're just listening, uh, for what they can bring. They might say, I went to Spain, we had a nightmare journey, let me tell you all about it. So they've not really listened at all to what I was saying. Or perhaps finally, an interrupter. So again, if I said, oh, I've been, you know, on this lovely holiday uh, to Croatia by train, they said, holiday? Lucky you, I wish I could have a holiday, and interrupt you and just go their own way. And again, Proverbs says, to answer before listening, that's folly and shame. So reassuring, giving advice, intellectualizing, going off on a tangent and interrupting. Let's stop again 
Why don't you now be a little bit vulnerable and tell the person closest to you what's your worst listening habit? And remember, it's your own worst listening habit, not theirs. when we're not listened to, because it is a feeling, isn't it? You feel not valued, you feel not seen, not heard, not understood, just not really seen by that person. And actually for me, I know it makes me just close down. I think, oh, you're not interested, you're not listening. Um, and I'll tend to then probably ask you a question because you probably want to talk, but it makes us feel not valued. And we're going to watch a quick clip now from the film Inside Out and see if you can spot those bad habits. Plus, also, we'll get a hint for some skills of good listening. So let's watch this clip now. No! No, 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 you can't take my rockets to the dark, Riley and I go to the moon! <sighs> Riley can't be done with me. Hey, it's gonna be okay. We can fix this. We just need to get back to headquarters. Which way to the train station? I had a whole trip planned for us. <gasps> hey, who's ticklish, huh? Here comes the tickle monster. Hey, bing bong, look at this. <laughs> oh, here's a fun game. You point to the train station and we all go there. Won't that be fun? Come on, let's go to the train station. I'm sorry they took your rocket. They took something that you loved. It's gone forever. Sadness. Don't make him feel worse. Sorry. It's all I had left of Riley. I bet you and Riley had great adventures. Oh, they were wonderful. Once we flew back in time, we had breakfast twice that day. Sadness. It sounds amazing. I bet Riley liked it. Oh, she did. We were best friends. <laughs> yeah, it's sad. <laughs> I'm okay now. Come on, the train station is this way. So can you think of a good listener in your life? I can think of a few. And I enjoy speaking to them because of these kind of uh, ways that they listen, because I know I'm going to feel kind of valued, listened to. They're going to actually be giving me their attention. That's how it feels, isn't it? You feel felt, you feel heard. And actually, it's a big part of what we can do for one another as Christians, as we seek to be Jesus' hands and feet, as we look after one another in church life, as we bring pastoral care to one another, as we care for one another, a huge thing is to listen. You might think, I don't know if I can help someone. I haven't got all the advice. I don't know what to say. They often don't need you to say very much at all. But it's such a gift when we can listen to somebody. It's a real gift. Listen to this uh, quote by theologian David Orsberger. Being heard is so close to being loved that for the average person, they are almost indistinguishable. So people feel loved when they're heard. We bring God into the world when we listen to others and we can be God to other people. Listening well is a really powerful means of receiving and giving God's love. Pete Scazzaro in his book and course, Emotionally Healthy Relationships says this, you receive the love of God by entering the world of another human being through deep listening, receiving a gift through a gift. And this one, you give the love of God by being a safe presence for another person. You're saying your life counts. That's so good, isn't it? It is God's love for us, writes German theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer, that he not only gives us his word, but he also lends us his ear. 
God hears us. Psalm 34 and 1 Peter 3 say this, the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their cry. His ears are attentive to your cry today. God hears you. He is looking at you. He is watching you. He is with you. He is listening to you. He's attentive to your cry. Hallelujah. And then we notice Jesus's interactions with individuals throughout the Gospels and look at the stories, check them out. How was Jesus with people? Well, he's really present. With an interruption, he's present. With a person, even though there's crowds, he is present. He listens well and he makes that emotional connection. And very often he asks people questions as a way of inviting them into a conversation and share their thoughts and share their feelings. When he spoke to the woman at the well in John 4, he engaged, he spoke with, he listened to this woman who was very different to him. Very different national background, history, different religious views. He listened, he asked her questions, he primed a conversation, he paraphrased her answer and he listened well so that he understood not just what she was saying but what lay behind what she was saying, enabled her to open up to him. You see, the prize in listening is emotional connection. Not information, it's emotional connection. And so let's have a look at this poster of some great ideas about being an active listener. Some people call it an active listener, an empathetic listener. Pete Scazzaro calls it incarnational listening because it's listening like Jesus. So that's wonderful, isn't it? And guess what? Listening well doesn't come naturally. It's a skill to be learnt and practised. Remember our key verse? Let everyone be quick to hear. Be a careful and thoughtful listener. So here I've got five great skills to help us listen. And five great skills for us to practice because that's how we're going to gain the skills. So the first one is to give the speaker your full attention. It's such a gift, isn't it, when someone gives you their full attention. So you face the speaker, you make eye contact, you ignore distractions, you focus on what is being said. Now, if you're in a church setting and there's a lot of people around, it's quite tricky to have a conversation without spotting someone or somebody needing you or being distracted because something's happening. So church might not be the best place to think about this, but when you're having a conversation with somebody, give them your full attention, face them, make eye contact, ignore the distractions and concentrate on what's being said. So that's the first one, give them your full attention. Now the second is to step into the speaker's shoes. Now remember my example where I said, oh, I'm quite tired, I've been waking up really early. I literally said that last weekend to a few people and it was interesting to hear their replies. Well, if you step into my shoes at that time, you're thinking, oh golly, there's no way you can have a nap right now. You've got loads to do and you'd give me a bit of sympathy, a bit of empathy, a bit of kindness, that kind of thing. Feel what they are feeling without judging or even interpreting. When you bring empathy, you are feeling with people and it fuels connection, doesn't it? Listen out for the emotions expressed and felt. And actually, we have to humble ourselves to listen, don't we? And not assume that we know what they're going to say. I'm terrible at that. I kind of like, I know where this conversation's going and I'm jumping to the conclusion. Well, no, I don't know where the conversation's going. I need to humble myself and actually listen for what the person's saying. So the second one is step into the speaker's shoes. Now the third one is that listening well also involves nonverbal communication. Now I can't see what you're doing right now, but I know that when I preach in front of a group at church, you know, you're so encouraged when you see the odd person nodding or smiling, because actually a straight face and no expression at all is really quite unnerving when someone is speaking. Now, I know I'm not having a one-to-one -one conversation when I'm talking about me preaching, but equally, when you are having a conversation with somebody, the non-verbal communication is really important. So you nod, you say, aha, uh -huh, you smile, you, you know, a little hand or something, whatever's appropriate. That non-verbal communication shows that you're engaged, shows that you're listening, reassures the person that you're with them and they can carry on speaking. So that's the third one. Listening well includes non-verbal communication. And the fourth is to ask questions. 
our people are amazing and interesting and different and isn't our life made wider and better and more beautiful when we get to know different people? Let's be curious people, ask questions. If you're listening well, it should prompt a question, a question about tell me more or a question about I was interested in that or I'd love to hear more about that or how did that make you feel? Listen out well so that you can ask questions. And then finally, the fifth one is to reflect back. Now, this feels a bit clunky sometimes, but it's a really helpful thing. You could kind of summarize or paraphrase what you've heard. Um, you could um, say, is, is there more? You know, tell me more. Is there something you're holding back? Um, you could even say, hey, gosh, thank you so much. You know, I feel really uh, like I know what's going on with you now. I feel really connected to you. Thank you for sharing that in such a vulnerable way. And then you might even say, hey, of everything you've said, is there something you really wanted me to hear in that? Is there, what's most important to you? I mean, conversations can be wide ranging, can't they? It can just literally be catching up with someone. Or it could be that someone's come to tell you that they're a bit upset about something or you've done something that's, you know, they've reacted to and you're sorting things out. Um, they could have had a really hard time and they're opening up to you about something. So this might be a really helpful question just to, just to have in mind that actually it's a really great skill to be able to reflect back and then ask them, hey, what's the most important thing you've said to me today? So let me just run through those again. Give the speaker your full attention. Step into their shoes. Don't forget the nods and the smiles. Ask questions and then reflect back. Five great listening skills for us to practice. And hey, what would our lives look like if we were all doing those things and really growing in our listening skills? Wouldn't it be rich? Wouldn't people feel loved, accepted, known? Wouldn't we have great relationships? I really believe this is a great first week for our series because it's so foundational to everything else. As we go into specifics, as we think of other skills, actually connecting on an emotional level, listening, to me feels like the real foundation to all of this. Let's go back to our key verse again. Listening and doing is the little kind of subtitle here. And then it says, my dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to become angry. Quick to listen. Oh God, help us to be quick to listen and slow to speak. Not to wait for a chance to jump in. Not to interrupt, not to reassure and not really listen, but to be quick to listen and slow to speak. That is God's will for us. That's his hint for us today, his tip. This is his good idea. This is the gift of love we can give other people if we listen to them. I remember the message said, lead with your ears. I love that. Let's make t-shirts, lead with your ears. Let's put it on post-its, lead with your ears, wonderful. The greatest gift we can give the world is to love people in the name of Jesus. And that requires listening. That requires listening. So I'm going to give you a tiny bit of homework. Why don't you look up those uh, listening skills again and practice those? That would be one thing. And then the other thing would be to think about how you just connect really easily, perhaps at the end of the day or with the people you live with or people at work. Um, over one of these kind of things. You might be saying something like, um, what's the biggest thing impacting you right now and how are you feeling about it? If you're up for a big question like that, you might say, hey, what sort of day have you had and how are you feeling about it? So tack that on the end. Or you might like to try my little high-low game. Everyone can play it, all ages. And it's so fascinating what somebody's high was. If you really look back over your day, what was your high? It's often really tiny, meaningful things. And what was your low? So can I encourage you, play that high-low game this week. Start to talk about feelings when someone's asked you about your day. And let's be great listeners. Let's give that gift of love to people as we listen well. Let me pray. Father, thank you for your word that is so rich and, um, yes, yeah, speaks to our everyday life. And thank you, God, for this uh, idea we've heard today that listening is a way of connecting and listening is a gift we can give others that shows them your love. And also, wow, we receive the gift as well because we've given to someone else. We, it's a gift to us 
that we've connected like that. God, would you help us? Help us, God, to lead with our ears. Help us, Lord, to love people by listening well, we pray. And Holy Spirit, will you help us? We are ingrained in bad habits. Would you help us this week? Would you transform us and change us and help us, please, as we lead with our ears, as we're slow to speak and we're quick to listen. In Jesus' name, amen.